Hello, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll explain how you can use uh, vector DB uh, in order to store uh, invoice uh, data, uh, ingest invoice data, and uh, convert it uh, uh, to vectors through embeddings, and um, then how you could uh, uh, get the retriever uh, from the vector DB, and you'll be able to use it in the next step uh, for uh, LLM processing to extract uh, key value pairs from the invoice data. I'll be using ChromaDB and Longchain. And I did a couple of tests and uh, I found out that uh, ChromaDB at this point of time probably uh, works uh, the best uh, with uh, Longchain integration and it's quite simple to uh, embed uh, your data with ChromaDB and then you could store it either on disk or uh, you can run it through a Docker container and uh, the main thing that ChromaDB offers a very simple API to work with and uh, it integrates well uh, with uh, LLM uh, flow. So uh, let, let, let's, uh, let's start. So the first thing is requirements TXT. Yes, uh, you see two main things here, Langchain and ChromaDB. Then I'm using uh, uh, local trans, uh, transformers uh, from the central transformers library uh, to generate uh, embeddings, basically to generate vectors from the raw text data. Then I'm using uh, uh, PyPDF library to read from the PDF and Python box to read from the configuration uh, from the configuration file, different uh, different entries to make sure they are not hard coded in code. So first uh, uh, ingest, and here we import uh, Chroma. Then we import uh, helper uh, helper classes from Langchain, right? And then uh, this is the main uh, function run ingest. And in the first step, we read uh, configuration properties. Then we load uh, content from the data folder like uh, in this case we have a single pdf file over here and then uh, we lo load the documents and we split them into chunks and we get texts and if we uh, look into the configuration file i have a chunk size thousand and I found that uh, with this specific kind of uh, information, like invoices, where you have a lot of numbers, usually not so much of the description text, uh, vector not only ChromaDB, but other vector databases, they don't perform well when you uh, split document into the smaller chunks. And uh, when you run a query, for example, to uh, fetch the total or, or, or so on, then uh, vector databases may not return correct uh, chunk. So uh, based on those tests, I think that uh, the better strategy is to uh, split into the larger chunks or in just uh, have like a single chunk of data, like in this case, 1000 uh, characters is, is enough to, uh, to, to uh, get the sample invoice data uh, into the single chunk. And then vector database uh, would act as... Uh, uh, as, as a store for the vectors, but it would not uh, uh, provide any search, it just would return a single chunk and then LLM uh, uh, would handle this chunk uh, by itself and produce the response. And in this case we would not rely on the vector DB to, pr to return us uh, the, uh, the proper chunk. And but still, this needs to be tested, and uh, maybe if your documents still be uh, differently, and you should uh, try to split documents in smaller chunks and see how it works. In my case, it worked better if I um, provide just a bigger single chunk to the LLM. Of course, there are limits, and uh, you will not, uh, you may not uh, send to LLM just a huge uh, chunk of data. So, in any case, if your invoice document is in multiple pages, you would need to split into the uh, several chunks. Just uh, my point is that you need to, um, to be careful and see uh, in your uh, situation how the splitting works and what is the best uh, uh, value for the chunk size. Okay, so we got text, then uh, we're using local embeddings for the hugging face embeddings. In this case, we're using uh, uh, this sentence transformers, all mini LM L6 uh, version 2. And we are normalizing embeddings here and we are running them on CPU. And then uh, I noticed that uh, especially if you're using ChromaDB and you persist the 
uh, vector store on disk. It's good uh, practice when you regenerate the, the same, re-ingest the same data uh, or uh, any other data, but I mean, if when you run re-ingest uh, uh, procedure, then it's a good thing to just remove completely the vector store from disk and then uh, when you run Chrome from documents, you'll just generate the fresh uh, 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 fresh uh, vector storage uh, because sometimes um, the vector storage may not be regenerated and when you'll be testing you may think that uh, you're working with the latest one but it's really the older one it's it, it may get confusing so it, it's a good thing to remove the vector storage before generating it and then in this single step uh, from, from documents we uh, process the texts with the embeddings, we generate vectors and store them in a vector storage. So we supply text embeddings, we specify the collection name, and later when we load uh, uh, Chroma uh, in the LLM pipe, pipe, pipeline, we'll refer to this collection name. Then we use uh, uh, vector space, uh, cosine vector space, and we specify the precise directory where the vector store will be saved. And then it's created. Okay. So we are done with ingest, and then if you look into the main script, so the main script as acts as like an orchestration script, which uh, brings uh, all the pieces related to the LM pipeline together. And by the way, LM step is not implemented yet in this application. I'll implement it in the next video. I'll be using Olama to run uh, models locally. So over here, what we do, we uh, call build uh, pipeline and then we call get relevant documents for the input and because in this uh, test I'm using um, uh, um, chunk size quite large so I just have a one chunk for the document it just returns the the, the document structure from, from the vector store. Okay, and then we looked into pipeline and this is the method invoked from the main script build rack pipeline. Uh, here we get also uh, configuration properties, then uh, we are loading uh, embedding model and we call the fun helper function here and it acts as a wrapper in this case, uh, in the case of pipeline implementation and uh, this is done for the simplicity purpose so that if you in the future would like to change hanging face embedding with something else you just go into the function, change them here, change the code here instead of changing into the main, main function. So uh, we specify the same model name like we did during ingest, the same uh, uh, arguments and, and so on, right? So we got embeddings and then in the next step we load the retriever, <coughs> we pass all the configuration properties here and what we do here we restore the vector store which was creating during ingest. So we pass collection name, we pass store path, we pass collection metadata, and we pass embeddings. And in this case, we don't pass <coughs> documents because documents are already vectorized and we get them back from the vector store. And <coughs> as we have the instance of the vector store, we call S retriever and we specify how many results uh, we should return when the query will execute against this vector store. And in this case, we specify one because the chunk size is 1000 and it's big enough to uh, store entire document in a single chunk. So we just specify the one, one result to be returned. Okay, and then we return back the retriever and return back the retriever to the main uh, orchestration script. And here we say that from the retriever, we get the relevant answer. And <clears throat> as I mentioned, that we have returned just one result. And that's because the chunk is big. And then we get the entire document. Right. And if we go over here to the terminal, uh, vector store is created. And if we run the command will load embeddings here and then uh, load uh, vector store and retriever and here we get get the document. Okay, and if you look into the document we see that this is the uh, start of the document and this is the end of the document over here. So we got entire uh, entire chunk of, uh, in, this, in, in a single in a single response. 
And again, to uh, to make sure that, uh, that this is important thing that in your case you may want to split document into the chunks, and then just to make sure, then uh, you need to make sure and test before you proceed to LLM step if the vector store for your type of documents correctly returns a proper chunk. Uh, because in my case, uh, my sample document have a lot of numbers, and uh, when I was asking, for example, to return and the uh, chunk with total information it was not returning correctly it is returning uh, uh, like the first chunk for example and this is uh, i tested this not only with from db with other vector dbs as well and it was the same thing so i came to the conclusion that in my case it's um, uh, better to to, uh, to have a large uh, larger uh, split chunk to uh, hold the entire document and then just return the uh, single split which will have the information for the entire document so thanks for watching and see you next time in the next video. I plan to use the same application and I plan to show how integrated with uh, Olama, uh, which runs um, LM models locally. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.